Hello and welcome tonight. President Buhari sets to crack down on oil industry, dissolve board of the NNPC. And Vice President Oshimbajo challenges judicial officers to resist on the influence, says everyone is equal before the law. And Speaker of the House of Representatives laments the devastation in Nigeria's northeast, asks for international assistance to rebuild the region. And over 28 people killed and many injured in an attack in the Tunisian resort town of Sousse. And on business news tonight, interbank lending rate eases to an average of 6% from 15% last week. And on sports news, Andy Murray faces difficult route to Wimbledon final as Joe Wilfried Songa, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer stand in his way. Tonight with a move by the president clearly aimed at repositioning the nation's oil sector. It is the dissolution of the board of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC. This decision is contained in a statement signed by the Director of Communications to the Head of Service of the Federation, Haruna Imrana, which states that the dissolution takes immediate effect. The statement further explains that President Muhammad Buhari has expressed gratitude to members of the dissolved board for their services to the nation. President Buhari has vowed to tackle corruption and block all leakages in the nation's economy, with the NNPC believed to be the major drain pipe. Of former governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria, now the Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi II, has alleged that about $20 billion was not accounted for by the NNPC. Following that allegation, an independent audit commissioned by former President Goodluck Jonathan in 2014 concluded that the NNPC is to pay $1.48 billion to the federal government. However, the allegation and the claims of malpractice in the oil sector have cast a shadow on the general operations of the NNPC, prompting the president's decision to focus attention on the state-run oil company. Now, while the president moves to tackle the rot in the oil sector, the vice president is also seeking a thorough reform of the nation's judiciary, a judicial system where the rule of law is applicable to all cases of Nigerians, irrespective of their status, is what the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, is advocating. He made this proposition today at the Justice Peter Bassey 10th Memorial Anniversary in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital. We wish to warn, though, that the next video you're about to watch contains flash photography. It's his first official visit to the Cross River State Capitol following his assumption of office, a visit that brings him to the International Conference Center at the University of Calabar. And of course, social justice. The event is a memorial lecture in honor of one of Vice President Oshibajo's forerunners in the legal profession. He believes it's a perfect moment to address the country's judicial system, which has been left to decay for many decades. The reason why we have what we have, the chaos that we had in the past years, is because there has been no consequence for, for, for wrongful conduct. None whatsoever. People get away with anything. Part of the reason why people get away with anything is also becoming cultural. When I was Attorney General, I'm sure that this was Ayo's a, a, a experience as well, and many people who have served before. I was faced constantly with having to deal with people who come and beg on behalf of someone who has done something wrong. Nobody wants to accept that their brother or their friend or their cousin should go to jail for committing an offense. Host Governor Mr. Ben Ayade and former Minister of Education Dr. Obi Izekwisili both advocate shaping core values that will give all Nigerians access to equal opportunity to services. Jobs brings us to the real issue, morality, because there is nobody who has moral credentials to moralize unless you operate within the ambits of moral integrity. It is the essential fabric that drives the future, the future of this country. In the absence of morality, 
the future is bleak. Americans say life is pursuit of happiness. In as much as you seek happiness in this world, without focusing on the morality, there is very little you can achieve. Most of the decadence we have found in society today originates from the lack of morality. Our problem and the reason that after 54, going to 55 years of independence, we have little or just a very little to show for governance since independence is because we distorted our incentives regime. Our incentives regime have become inverted. You are rewarded for bad behavior. You are punished for good behavior. The late first High Court judge of the Southeastern State, Justice Peter Bassey, is remembered by his colleagues as one of those who fought for the independence of the judiciary. Another major source of concern is the devastation in the northeast part of the country caused by insurgency. And the Speaker of the House of Representatives is appealing for foreign aid to help mitigate the effects of the attendant challenges in the region. The Speaker, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, made this appeal when he met delegations from the Canadian High Commission and the Bill Gates and Melinda Gates Foundation. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, reports. The delegation from the Canadian High Commission, led by the High Commissioner, meeting with the leadership of the House of Representatives. The High Commissioner said his country has always enjoyed good relations with Nigeria and that they look forward to continuing that relationship. So we very much look forward to, to, to reaching out uh, with the, the various committees of the House of Representatives um, in the weeks and months ahead with a view to identifying further areas where we may work together. The Speaker thanked the delegation for its contribution to the recently concluded elections. He then sought their assistance in addressing the devastation caused by insurgency in the northeastern part of Nigeria. If there's any leading role that Canada can play in not only combating terrorism in that zone, but leading efforts to generate funds which we can use on terms that are acceptable to international donor agencies to redevelop that zone, it's, it's good for us to get our people off the ground uh, in terms of providing rebuilding schools that have been destroyed by through the activities of terrorists and then rebuilding communities. This was an appeal he also made when he met with a delegation from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The group said they were in the National Assembly in connection with some legislation such as the health bill. We want to continue to support the government of Nigeria to ensure that these vaccines and this health care is brought to people who need it uh, and that women and children don't die of preventable diseases through a strong primary health care system. Um, so this requires that you support the, oper uh, the operationalization of the Health Act by gazetting the Act. So that's specifically the request for you is to gazette the Act so that it can be put into operation. Operation. One thing we want our international partners, development partners, to help in not only combating terrorism, but providing the kind of funds we need in order to redevelop that zone and then build schools, build medical facilities, accord on all those high lofty targets in the MDGs that unfortunately we were unable to achieve and very soon the mandate is going to run out. So we still have that challenge. The speaker assured his guests that the National Assembly is committed to addressing the concerns of Nigerians and ensuring that Nigeria meets its obligation with the international community. Lanre Lassisi, Channels Television News. A Kano State Upper Sharia Court sitting in Rijer Lemu has sentenced nine people, including a woman, to death after being convicted for blasphemy. An Islamic cleric, Abdul Inyas, Hajia Meiro Ibrahim, and ten others were accused of making blasphemous statements against the Prophet of Islam at a religious gathering in honor of Sheikh Ibrahim Inyas on May the 20th, on May the 5th, rather. The spokesperson of the Kano Sharia Court, Malam Ibrahim Babajibo, told journalists that four other people were discharged and acquitted for not being found guilty.
Honorable Mr. Court Regent Lemu has passed the judgment on the case between Commissioner of Police versus Haji Amiro Ibrahim and 12 others over the blasphemous statement on Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. That uh, Al Qasim Abu Bakr, Yahya Abu Bakr, Isa Abu Bakr, and Abdullahi Abu Bakr were discharged and acquitted, having not been found guilty under Section 404 of the Sharia Criminal Procedure Law 2000. So the rest were sentenced to death as they were found guilty under Section 110 and Section 382B of the Sharia Penal Code Law 2000, respectively. Tragedy struck on the Shagamu Benin Expressway earlier today after 12 people believed to be students of the Ogun State-owned Olabisi Onabanjo University, Agoiwe, were killed in an automobile crash. According to the commander of the state's Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Agency, Tommy Hamzat, the truck which was headed towards Lagos against the traffic lost control and collided with a bus near a Sheremo. All the police... Public relations officer Mr. Muiwa Adib Jobi confirmed the incident, saying that the remains of the deceased have been deposited at the mortuary of the Olabisi or Nabanjo University Teaching Hospital in Shagamu. And in part two, after the break, National Universities Commission wades into staff schools controversy, urges institutions to generate their own funds. Stay with us.